Well, good morning. This is Hero. Uh, today is the tail end of March. And look what's in need of work again. All my pines. Now, typically around here, we work on the pine about twice a year. In the fall, we do mostly uh, major pruning and restyling. Now it differs from uh, region to region, but for us here, especially when the summer is so hot, we've been using this method. So for us here, uh, basically we have the same uh, style for most of the bonsai during the spring. Uh, I'm gonna bring one or two inside so we could see a little bit better but I wanted to, you to see what I have outside before uh, I get the work done. I think I talked in the past about gauging the health of the plant. We look at the candles. And we also talk about balance of energy. So if you look at this tree here, I'll start from the bottom and look at the candles, the center candles. Uh, this one here, everything seems about the same length. That means it's in pretty good balance. Now, if certain areas have uh, much longer candles than others, that we refer to that as out of balance. Taking a close look at this, look at the candles. They're about the same length. Once again, uh, fairly good balance. And if we look at this whole section, everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. You just need. Okay, now we're back in the studio so that I could kind of show you a little bit more in detail what we do this time of the year. This is a Japanese black pine, probably 30 some odd years old, might be getting close to 40. Okay, what we should be looking for is the candles. See this candle, this is the one in the middle and that will kind of give you indication uh, how well the energy of the tree is balanced. So the one up here and here relatively similar in size. That means this energy of this tree is in well uh, balanced. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do for this particular tree is to remove the center candle first. Oh. This mask, it's not because people are here, it's because of allergies. Uh, these things produce pollen. Anyway, so there's almost no reason to leave the center candle. So that's what I'm going to do first, is to remove the center candle of all. Okay, what I'm talking about is uh, in a, a black pine, and most of the pines, it comes out like this in clusters. This is the center candles, right? Right here, so I'm cutting the center candles off, and then these are the secondary. And what I'm doing right now is just removing the center candle, and then we'll get to the next step. Okay, I think I got most of the center candles. There are some long ones, but they're not 
the center candle, unless I missed it. So what's, what we're going to do next is what to do with the cluster that's around the center candle that was just removed. So basically, these that are uh, secondary, they get shortened. Okay? And a lot of times you could start to pluck them off. Okay, the center candle has been removed, but this secondary is too long, so we cut them short. These short. And if it's really young, all you have to do is break them off like that. When it's big like that, a lot of times it will not work. But see these? That's how we get the branches in place. Now, just repeat the pro process over and over. Okay, some of you are thinking or saying, hey, that's not the way I learned it or how uh, I do it. That's okay because evidently there's so many uh, technique to this black pine, I don't think there is one that is uh, absolutely correct. I'm just showing you one technique which I happen to be doing most of the time. Okay? Now, those of you that like really simplify rules, you're out of luck. Evidently, the confusion is, well, I don't know exactly what they are, but according to one of the books I was reading, there is like 50 some odd techniques to uh, prune a pine, or a black pine at least. And to this day, I really don't know what they are. I think I told you in the past, uh, I learned how to do the black pine uh, when I was still living in Los Angeles, right? Mr. Yamashita uh, took the time to teach me the basics. And there, we did the timing differently. Uh, but after returning here and finding out that, wow, our summers are even more intense than uh, LA uh, summers, found that you can't do the timing like even in Los Angeles. They get hot there, but usually only in the 90s. And here, we could go into the hundreds and have a tendency to burn. So I've had to make adjustments. Um, I have a lot of lower branches and from now into the November or so that when we do the other pruning, I have to keep this very thick, protect the trunk. Uh, so now through the summer, I have to have all this foliage that keeps the trunk well protected. I know there's a lot of people that want to see the trunk more, but around here it's a little bit on the dangerous side. It won't kill the tree, but what happens is it's sun scorch and then parts of the uh, bark will start peeling off. I have not seen one die yet, but it could look rather unattractive for a while. Okay, so we probably should do this, do this. See? See how I keep everything tight in here? Now, okay, it's getting very close to the finish for this time of the year for around here. Okay. I'll go ahead and touch it up. Sometimes, you know, this will be done in stages. Today I'm pushing it so that I get done uh, right away, but on some trees, it's better to just get the center candle 
and then wait for the secondary to get into a certain level and then prune it. Boy, this is really should confuse you a lot, huh? Okay, now last year I had this lady that bought a lot of uh, pines, but she's going into the Bay Area and she wanted to see more of the trunk. So before she, uh, well, it took about a week or two before from the time she came to purchase and the time she came to pick it up. So we opened it up. So now if you're going into cooler areas, then yes, you could open it up and uh, see the trunk. But for here, I'm gonna stay with uh, the safety of having plenty of foliage protect the trunk. This branch here, I think most people would have cut this off a long time ago. They kind of follow the one-third rule. One-third of the way up is your first branch. Well, this one is way too low. And most likely this is too low too. But it helps to fatten that up. So if you actually looked at the trunk, there's great movement and taper. And besides, Keeping that is protecting that trunk. Okay, and one of the things that uh, stuck to my mind when Mr. Yamasta was teaching me, he said, you could always take it off, but you can't add. Okay, I think this is about it. Um, let me start from the base like we always do. Look at the tremendous root flare on this. And then as it goes up the trunk, some is hard to see because of the needles in the way, but that was very intentional. See, movement and taper all the way. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up this series on pines in the spring. So we're at the tail end of April I'm gonna get the rest of the trees uh, done more or less the same way. Uh, black pine tends to be a little bit more difficult. Reds and others that will be done is basically the same way. Okay, so anyway, I wanna say goodbye for now. I'll see you again real soon in another chapter. Still confused after watching this video? Uh, it's not you. It's not me. It's just one of those difficult subjects because there's so many little variables. Um, and I'm just hoping that if I keep making enough of these, all these little bits and pieces will come together for you and say, aha. Well, it hasn't aha for me yet in terms of teaching. So anyway, we'll struggle together in learning how to do these pines. Um, the problem I have is I kind of know what I'm doing, but I can't always explain why I do what I did or something like that. Anyway, so this is Hero saying, if you're confused, well, so is everybody else, so don't worry about it.